What is up, Honey Badger Nation? This is John Kitchens, and welcome to episode 152 of Expert Mentors Live. I'm really, really excited to dive into today's episode and and our guest, um, really on you know business model and and growing and um, you know how to best structure and continue to grow inside of EXP. So. Pierre, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing awesome. I'm watching that little promo video you just put on, and now I'm really nervous. I, I, you know, it's it's when you uh, when you reached out to me and asked me to be on here. I was well, first of all, I was honored. I think it's amazing because you know we all look up to you and and all your coaching and everything that you do, and we all appreciate it. Uh, especially my son. I know my son really appreciates everything that you <laughs> you've done for him. But, um, anyways, and then you know, first question I had was. What, what do you want me to talk about? <laughs> I just to give everybody a lot of hope today, hopefully, right? Like, if this clown can do it, anybody can do it. So uh, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate you making the time, jumping in. And, and um, you know, it's it's funny, you know, 152 episodes here. And, and that's I get the same kind of response. It's like, what the hell do you want me to talk about? I'm like, dude, like I see, right? Like I see what... And sometimes, you know, when, when we get so entrenched, like we're not aware of the impact and the value that we're actually creating and, and providing. And so it's sometimes that outside angle to, to uh, you know, be able to pull out. And I was like, I don't, Pierre, we can talk about whatever. I just know it'll be valuable to everybody. And you're like, hey, let's, let's talk model. And I'm like, yes, let's talk about the model. And so before we dive into that, I would love for you to, you know, give a little, context and background to, to who you are and, and kind of market and, and, and where you're at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and um, I've been in the business 20 years now. We, uh, when we first started, I went to a small company here called Sutton Group. And uh, after uh, about a year, I kind of realized oh, I need to go to a bigger name brand because I thought I needed the name brand. So I went to a company called Royal LePage, went there, uh, found out it was the exact same as the other company except more money. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we, uh, we we quickly grew our business. I, I started off part time and quickly grew into uh, to building. Uh, I was making more money part time than I was full time. Then uh, we started building a team. And then obviously I was getting a little tired of, uh, you know, I think my last year there, I paid them ninety six thousand dollars to be part of their company. And I just didn't I just didn't see the value anymore. And um, so we actually um, studied to open a Keller Williams. And um, for about a year, I spent time with Keller Williams, learning their model, figuring it out, and then realized we needed 75 agents to be profitable. And I just mm -hmm. didn't want to get into babysitting. So what we did was we took everything that we knew and we started our own uh, boutique um, independent brokerage. Uh, we did that for nine and a half years. And you know what? We ran it like a team model. The most we ever had was 20 agents. And uh, we ran it as a team model. Everybody was helping each other. Things were good, or at least I thought things were good, right? Um, and then Andre Lafontaine contacts me and throws the rent <laughs> and everything, right? So <laughs> shook uh, up your whole world, right? Oh man, you know he he's like, hey, have you heard of EXP? And I'm like, yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. And so basically, I thought as an owner, I should probably know what's coming down the pipes. And what I do know is that I've always been involved in coaching, and uh, I knew that the U.S. was always ahead of Canada. Uh, like three to four years, there was they were always ahead of us, and everything that was happening there would eventually get here. So I thought, you know what, I better look into this. So I watched the video, and then I didn't sleep for two weeks. So uh, yeah, Andre just messed everything up. So yeah. um, you know, we we and even my wife said, you know, like this is we've already got a good thing going. Why would we change this? And I said, well, this is good. This is really good. <laughs> there's yeah. there's some opportunities, but the other thing it did was it made me realize that I did have some pain points. Right. Even though I didn't think I had any, um, I saw that this would solve a lot of issues. I think some of our biggest issues, um, I, I believe very strongly in training and coaching. And um, but the problem was I had brand new agents on my team. And then I had guys that have been in the business 20 years. Well, you, mm -hmm. you sit in a meeting room and you try to coach them. They're not looking for the same coaching. 
right? It's, right. it's just not the same thing. So I was always struggling to um, figure out, okay, how do we coach these people? Then, you know, then there was the fact of, you know, the model that because it was a team model, I was constantly replacing agents. And I was also attracting a lot of newer agents, which is fine, which is great. But the problem was the newer agents were a lot of work. And then when you were bringing those newer agents on, um, you know, you're spending all your time training. And then in a year, you know, the, the, you get them making 100, 150 grand a year and then they leave because they can do it somewhere else cheaper. Yep. So it was so frustrating that you, you know, just when you got things going really good, everything would crumble. And then you'd start all over again and then it would crumble and then you start all over again. So it was just a, a, a bad hamster wheel that we were in. Vicious uh, cycle. I mean, it, it is. And that's, that yeah. is the number one flaw in that team model. And it's, you know, being independent, right. Is even more, you know, it's like, you know, you're laying and you're laying awake in bed at night and you're like, I wonder who's, who's going to be leaving me next. Right. Exactly. Just, then you get the dreaded call. Hey, <laughs> you know what it's about, right? You know what it's and about. there goes another one, right? Like it's yeah. just, and and it didn't matter what you did or how much you offered or whatever. They just always felt they could do it better somewhere else, right? And we were just basically becoming a stepping stone for for agents to learn. And yeah. um, now, I mean, we we we've had some amazing people that have stayed with us for for many years. You know, I've um, and I appreciate those people, and they become friends and. And, and that's great. But, um, you know, we looked at EXP and then we, we made the change and wow, what a difference. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a difference. Yeah. So is from your perspective, was it always, you know, the conversation on how you can, how can we add more value to the agents? Is yeah. that, was that kind of always the thought process? That, that was my biggest stress in life is how do I make it so that nobody leaves? Right. How, how can I make this thing so good that nobody wants to leave? So EXP solved those problems, because when I looked at the training, I, I think that was probably the number one thing that I looked at. I went, OK, if I can help them become better agents, they will make more money and then they won't leave. Right. And then then we had to create a, a positive culture, which EXP has done for us as well. It's been amazing. Um, so now you got the training, the coaching, and then you add the stocks and then you add the revenue share and then you add the technology and you add all those things. And I was like, you know what? I can't compete with this. There's just no way I can compete with all this. So why don't I take what I'm already doing, add this on top of it and see what happens. And, you know, we went from having 13 agents on our team to this week, we have 27 agents now, two years later, wow. we've got four more in the hopper ready to go. So we're going to be over 30. The goal for this year was 30. Now I just, we just changed it again. We said, well, we might as well go for 40. Um, so the goal for the end of the year is 40, but not only that we've added, and, and again, I haven't broken any records and I don't claim to break any records here, but um, you know, we've added another 230 agents to our revenue share group as well. And that's creating some some residual income. So that's starting, you know, I know you and I had a conversation the other day and I'm like, okay, now I got to figure out how to shift it, right? Yeah. But, but I also don't want to lose the team thing because that is so, it's been so good. Like we've got some amazing people. Um, I guess probably the biggest thing is that we're attracting a lot of top agents rather than newer agents. So we got brand new people starting, but then we have people, we have somebody that just joined their team the other um, little while ago that had been in business 50 years. We have someone else that's been in the business 20 years and these are good agents. Like one of them had their own brokerage and they shut down and they joined us. Yeah. So, so the value that EXP offers on top of what we're doing, I think is just making it better for everybody. And I guess we can probably get into talking into, you know, the different model that I've, I've started doing as well. So, yeah, I, I think that that's definitely going to, going to help, um, you know, definitely want to get into that. The, you know, just listening, listening to you and listening to the story and, you know, I honestly believe if, if you're not at EXP, you're better off independent, right? And it's just, yeah. just from a straight business um, viewpoint. And, you know, you did all the right things, right? You did the math. And that's what, you know, even great agents, as they're growing, they're always doing the math. And they're yeah. always looking at that. And so be, being able to have that, and that was, a, that, was, that was the constant battle for us always was like, how can we add more value? But straight up business, you can't afford to do that. So yeah. I think that's, you know, being able to plug in to where you can benefit the agents. Yeah. And, and so what I would love to hear, you know, not like 
because it's working now, but two years in, what did you do to say, Hey, we're at 13, but what did we, what did you guys do two years ago that started to bring agents in to now to where 27, you know, we're going to hit our target of, of 30 on the team. Like what were, what were you guys doing to get to that point? You know, even two years ago. Well, okay. So first of all, backing up two years ago when we started, you know, I, I had to, I had to sacrifice a little, I'm not going to lie. I had to sacrifice a little bit in the beginning, right? Because I had a lot of my agents on 50, 50 splits and like a 60, 40. So I didn't want my agents to leave at the time. So what I did was I modified my splits a little bit. I took a little less because they were going to be paying EXP, but because we had a mega team, they were on a $4,000 cap. So oh, I, didn't, wow. I didn't, you know, so basically I was giving up the four grand, right? So I, I adjusted their splits, made it a little bit better. Um, and, and at the time I had 15 agents on the team, two of them decided not to come with us. Okay. But within 30 days, we replaced those two with two really big agents that were doing huge volume. So, so that was, you know, that, that felt better. Um, and then, you know, once we got the brokerage closed and we got to focus a little more on this, then we started, you know, people started asking questions like, why did, why did they shut down their brokerage? What's going on? So we, people started reaching out to us. Then we started reaching out to them. And then it wasn't until about, I'm going to say eight months into it that I came up with this, you know, uh, three options for agents. And uh, once I did that, that was the game changer for us. Mm. Like that's where things really started to change. And we picked up some, some really good agents out of it. And then they started bringing on agents. So now it wasn't just me promoting the team. It was a whole pile of people promoting it. And I think that that's what the cool thing about EXP is, is that the agents all have vested interest in seeing the thing grow. But now, you know, we were able to bring people onto the team if that's what they chose to do. And and we, you know, I know we call it a team, but it, it we've created more of a partnership group and um, everybody's a partner, right? So, so that's kind of how that started. And then, um, you know, we played around with the numbers a bit. And um, like I said, if, if you want me to share a screen, I can. I would love to. Uh, I think that'll be really, really powerful, really helpful for everybody listening in. So did you kind of like, hey, we got to figure out multiple options pretty early on. Did you guys have options from, from an independent standpoint or coming over to EXP, you knew you had to make some, some. No, we had, we, we had like, I mean, we had our option based on where your volume was right so if you were doing this this is what you got and and that was it um so now we've kind of modified it a bit and made it more of an incentive for people to grow and to get to different levels so it was pretty you know like this this you know you had this before now you have this this and this and and plus all the stuff that exp is offering on top so i think the combination of all three has what's changed everything for us really how do and and so you, you, you see an agent or you see somebody that's running, running their own show and they're like, well, I don't want to mess with that. I just Hey, we're going to be just this one option. How do you see, you know, for you as a, as a business owner making that decision, but then even from an agent's perspective, you having options, how, how have they responded? So I, I definitely talk, talk about real quick. And, and if you want to pull that up, we'll get it ready to share. But for you as a business owner, making that decision, to give options in the model kind of what was that that thought process for you working through that so i think the biggest thing i learned from you guys is find out what's good for the agent not what's good for you because and and i i guess i always kind of ran it based on what was good for me mm -hmm. right and that was the wrong thing so if i've learned anything from exp and you guys is that if you do things for the right reasons for the, you know, for what people want and what's important to them, then, then that's all that matters. And the rest will all come. And that's what that I think is what has helped us the most. Right. So I've had to do a bit of a mind shift and now my, my total goal every day is what can we do for the agents? What, how can we give them more value and help them grow their businesses? Because the more I help them grow, the better it is. Right. I just had a chat with my son the other day. You know, we get sometimes we get a little competitive, right? Uh, fast and surface, <laughs> and we get a little competitive about you know how many deals did you do this year? And 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 last year I did I think seventy five deals myself. This year I've done twelve. Yeah. Right. And I've made way more money yeah. because I've shifted how I'm thinking, and now I'm giving that business to the agents, and I'm helping them grow their businesses. 
and and mentoring and coaching them and getting them plugged into you guys so that we can grow you know because the more they make the more we make and everybody's happy and 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 so it's just been a bit of a shift right yeah. um, but i love them pick john like i when we have our conversations it's like what's important to you what do you need right and then i'll guide them i'll say okay this is where i think you need to be right i had somebody the other day like she's you know been struggling on her own and i said well this is you you need to be in the partner program because you need leads you need you don't need to be worried about doing all your marketing and and your social media and all that because you're not good at it you told me you're not good at it you need to be focusing on being in front of people and that's where you're going to make more money right 100 yeah, so, percent. and i know it's work because we brought agents over that you know i know one particular she was making 50 grand a year and now she came over and last year she made over 200 grand and that it didn't matter what her split was because she was more profitable and she made more money right so yep. And we have story after story after story like that. So it, it definitely makes me feel good about the decision that I made because we're, we're changing people's lives and they're, they're doing better. That's all mm -hmm. there is to it. Right. Yeah. I love that. And, and that's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, yeah. it is, it's just, you know, yeah. if you have that, that viewpoint and then you're making, you know, you're structuring and, and building the model when you know that that's the vision. And, you know, when, when we work through kind of working through any, any right things, right order, you got to get clear on the vision first. And so if you have that mindset that we're building an organization that's impacting, you know, lives, human beings, lives and changing lives. And then what's the model for us to do that? <clears throat> and then we can execute on the strategy and build the team. But you got to get clear on what it is, that purpose of your organization. And then you can align the model to help you achieve it. So, hey, if you want to share, share that, we'll throw it up. Uh, for everybody to listen to, I'd love for you to walk, <clears throat> walk everybody through kind of your options at this point. If you hit share down on the bottom, should be able to pull it up. You see that? Or there no? it is. So <clears throat> there you go. Let me add that. There you go. Yeah. And let me remove. There you go. <clears throat> all good all good so i guess we'll start with option number one so option number one is basically you know the exp model right the 80 20 split um you know what your costs are and, and in canada obviously we've got some different numbers than you guys but um you know the 139 a month and, and and that's it so that's that's the standard model we go through that uh once i show the presentation and i go through the slide deck with them and i explain it then this is this is option number one then you got option number two where we actually do a lot of stuff for the agents and and there's a huge list here but basically you know this is for the agents that are busy already that are doing you know they're they're still on an 80 20 split um you know sixteen thousand dollar cap but we do a lot of their admin services for them uh we don't have like we have what we call floating office space so you know we got 2500 square feet of office space but um you know nobody gets their own office so it's just, you know, they can come in and use whatever office is available. We do all their signage for them, their open house signs, their lock boxes. Uh, we have a stager on staff that does the staging for them. Um, you know, all their business cards, listing presentations, all their professional you know, graphic design, Matterports, house floor plan. We do a lot of stuff because we have people on staff that do that. Okay. So it's a fixed cost to me. And that doesn't change based on, you know, whatever. Some of the things, you know, fluctuate depending on listing. But I charge them, you know, I put them on an 80-20 split for that, okay? And, you know, the people that are on that plan have all said the same thing. We, we can't do it for that. Like, all that stuff, we, there's just no way we can do it for 20%. So, so for them, it's easier than hiring uh, an admin person, a marketing person, a social media person, and a video guy, right? Yeah. So since we already have them in play, then it's just it's, it's a win-win. And then they're on a 16,000. Then, then we got the option number three. So this is the Nadeau Real Estate Group. This is where we have um, our team model and it's a partnership program. And because we're a mega agent icon team, they got a $4,000 cap, okay? So we do all the same things as option number two, but then we add some other stuff. So we got billboard advertising that we do for them. We have digital uh, media boards. Uh, we pay for KV Core leads for them. We pay for agent locator leads. Um, and then we do social media commercials for them and we do their blog content and all that stuff as well. And then we've got them on a floating scale. So a brand new agents on a 60, 40 with me, 
Um, anybody making over 50,000 is 70, 30, and then anything over that is 75, 25. So you can work that whatever. And I've shared this with a bunch of people in our group and you can work that whatever way you want. Um, but you know, the nice thing about this is that they pick, they choose what's important to them. Now, if they ask me, you know, and they ask me my opinion and, and where I think they should be, I mean, I'll analyze their business and figure out where they're at and what I think they need. And then I'll suggest to them, you know, maybe you should try this model first, right? Now, the cool thing is they can go from this model to this model, right? They can go from option three to option one if they want. So, you know, they can start off on three, go to two and go to one. We had somebody that, um, you know, she'd been with me for, for many years and was a fantastic agent. And she decided to go to option one because she wanted her own branding, right? Um, and that was great. But then within a couple of months, she called me and she said, listen, I didn't realize how much work you guys were doing. <laughs> so, so, so she jumped on to option number two. So it was a win-win for everybody, right? It worked out good for her and it worked out good for us. And, and the nice thing is we didn't lose her. Normally we would have lost that person to another company. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's, oh. that's the thing, right? So creating, you know, an option to where they can still stay a part of the culture. Cause I think I really, you know, the, the two, the two things, right. You've got to nail the culture. Culture is the most important and then you've got to be able to to have a model that is competitive and maybe a, they can make a little bit more with you than anywhere else and so when you when you have those two and you nail those two you win and then the people don't ever they'll they'll never leave yeah um to be able to nail that what um so currently what does the, um, let, let me, we'll come to that. If somebody's like, you know, Pierre, that's awesome. I want to adopt that. Where should I start? What would you tell them? Hey, start here. You know, your team, people need to look like this. So where would you tell people's, you know, to, Hey, if you're, if this is the route you want to go, this is where yeah. you need to start. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing they got to do is hire an assistant, right? The, the first person they got to hire. And, and I heard, uh, who was it the other day? Al Stasek, I think, said it. You know, your, your worst hire will still be way better than what, <laughs> than what you got right now. So, yeah. you know, um, but I've got somebody right now uh, within our group that, you know, he's asking me the same questions. Where do I start? What do I do? And I said, well, you got to hire an assistant. The problem is when you're hiring an assistant is that, you're looking for somebody that can do your marketing. You're looking for somebody that can do some paperwork. You're looking, you, you know, they've got about four or five different things and, and they're usually not good at all those things. Right? right. But I will say this. I mean, it took me way too long to hire my first person. And, um, and when I did, they all told me the same thing. You hire your first person, your business will, will, you know, go leaps and bounds. Our first year doubled. So we doubled our volume, uh, you know, for, and I, and it wasn't anything spectacular. So, but it was just enough to eliminate all the crap that I didn't want to do because I needed to be in front of people. And my problem was I was just getting way too tired to do everything on, on my own. Uh, wasn't good in my health, wasn't good in my relationship, wasn't good on. So once we got to unload all that stuff, it was, it was awesome. Then we started hiring agents, right? So then we started bringing on agents. Well, and there's that traditional team model, right? Well, you know, now you're making sure those agents are happy and you're replacing them every year and everything else. Um, so then we started building a team that way with, with the agent. Um, and you know what? I still think, I, I think it's better now than what it used to be because we have more to offer them than I've ever had. So we're not replacing agents. Like we've had one retire, right? We're, we're not replacing agents like we did before. So, um, and not only that, but we're growing so fast so that if one does leave, it's like, it's not a big deal anymore. Right. Right. Mind you, I still lose sleep over it. I don't like to see anybody <laughs> leave, but I, I take it, I take it personally. Right. And I um, do too. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, same, it's like, same. I, I want people to be happy and I want people to do well. And, and, um, that's the stress that I put on myself now is that how can I help them get to the next level? How could, what can we do to make it better for them? Right. But, it's like anything you, you can do, you know, you can offer them everything you, you possibly have, especially all the tools that we have. But I tell them all the same thing. It, you know, I can't do the work for you. You got to go and do the work. You still got to hustle. Right. So yeah. um, then, then I went from, you know, now, now what it looks like is I have a office manager who is like unbelievable. 
Uh, and then, you know, she kind of runs the show. And then I have a marketing manager who overlooks all the social media, all the ads, all the, um, you know, he's doing a lot of the um, lead gen stuff for the agents as well, too. And uh, he's been with me for a long time and he's really changed the look of our company. Um, now, I've, I've done something a little bit different with them. I've made them partners. So they, as we grow, they grow, uh, they get a percentage of the profit. Okay. Got so it. every six months they get a bonus based on what our profit margins are. This year is going to be really cool for them. Um, just because of the growth has been unbelievable. Um, so now, Pierre, do you, do you, um, from a partner perspective, you're not like actual equity in the company, but actual percentage of the profit. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So they're not, yeah, they're not partners in the company, but they're partners in, in just the profit that that's being made. And, and the reason yes. we did that, I'll tell you why, because I used to have somebody that worked for me and, you know, she would get upset every time we grew because she was on a salary. And now I get it because the more, the more people we had, the more work she had and, and that, you know, didn't, didn't make her any more money. Right. So she would get resentful. Now they want to see the company grow. They're excited about seeing the company grow. They have a say in what goes on, right? And I depend on them. I've, I've basically, you know, taken away from what I've learned, you know, surround yourself with amazing people. And right now I'm just extremely fortunate to have some really amazing people. And now we're, you know, we're having to hire because we're growing, we're having to hire some more people. So we're actually trying the VA route. Um, we're doing that. We're working a little bit on that. I love it. And uh, so, so basically they will each have their own assistant and um, that's going to help them you know offload some of their work and help us focus more on uh, like my marketing guy i want him to help us more with the you know the videos and things like that promotional stuff for the agents and um and with the exp side of you know the agent growth stuff as well i think it's time for me to start focusing a little more on that yeah well you have the time right and that's and that's yeah. really what we're trying to get to and create that leverage and <clears throat> i loved what you said you know it's it's like you've got to get the, you've got to get the people right you know build, building a business is a team sport and it takes you know it takes people to be able to accomplish and and you know that grand vision of of impacting so many lives and it just takes support and you know for all of you guys listening and <clears throat> i'm definitely pro partnership but I think the right way, you got to be careful. If you give equity, you're really just giving them a tax bill. Um, this way, now they're tied to the bottom line and yep. they're, you know, you, you relieve that pressure from a tax standpoint, but now you hit them, you know, they're, they're tied into the profit. So yeah. that's the right way I, I really think to go instead of restructuring the whole foundation with key people. Now it's different when you have founders or whatever coming in, obviously there's going to be equity position, but just your, your key people, I think you nailed it <clears throat> the right way of tying them to that bottom line. So they are excited about growth and, you know, understanding as we grow, we're still, we're still paying attention to that outcome. And, and so, you know, that's, ah, man, I, I love hearing that. So that's fantastic. And, and the reason, you know, and I just want to emphasize why I believe go VA, the VA route, is is that we all only have x number of dollars to put the best team on the field and the va route allows us to get really talented people for the salary cap and the dollars that we have and you know it takes multiple people it's like you said you know that first one you want them to do five different functions yeah and they're going to be good at one but they're spending time on the other four so they're really not good at anything and and so this the quicker you can specialize the better that they're going to be able to perform the outcome is going to be better and and so but yeah i mean it's just right things right order and you got to grow grow into it yep yep take me 20 years to figure it out though <laughs> <laughs> you, you know you know you know when my business really skyrocketed though is as soon as i started taking coaching so it really, really changed. Now, this is the interesting thing. <laughs> I think I told you this. So the two years I've been with EXP is the first two years in the last 15 that I haven't had a coach, yeah. like a specific coach that I'm paying for. And my business has quadrupled. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I'm not saying that you don't need a coach. I'm saying that we have multiple coaches now. Yeah. Like I get to watch your stuff every week. 
right? I get to hear Jay Kender and Al Stasek and Michael Reese I, and Brent Gove, and I get to hear all these people. So I'm constantly when I'm in the in the car, I'm I'm getting coaching nonstop, right? Yeah. I, I don't listen to music anymore. I, I listen to coaching. Yeah. So so to see that, and then to see our agents who have tied into the coaching, it's been like to see them grow. I think that that's what's happening too. Is and maybe that's why we're more profitable. Is that they're growing because of the coaching. So yeah. you need it. You got to have it, right? So it is. We all do, right? We we all have blind spots, and as we continue to grow, you know, there's always a blind spot, and that's the cool thing with what coaching can do. One, it can help us, you know, keep the the train on the tracks because it can get a little wobbly, as especially as much growth as you guys have had. And so it's good to have somebody that can keep us accountable, keep the train on the tracks, but also, you know, give us tools and resources to work through situations and, and things to think about, um, connections to, to make. And then, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the whole, you know, what we, what we reveal, we can heal and coaches are, are good for us to be able to help us, you know, see what we can't see. Uh, what did I say to you? I got to figure it out. I still got to figure it out. I got, you know, <laughs> what, what do I do next? How do I, <laughs> where, how do I get to that next level? Like, unfortunately, you know, you know, our personalities, we're never happy, right? We want to, how, how can we do it better, faster and, and grow it? And, and, uh, you know, I said to you, I need to have a coaching call with you after this call. Cause, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but it, it's just because like talking to somebody like you is amazing because you've talked to so many big producers that you know what everybody's kind of doing and that's that's the knowledge that you want you want to know right. like okay what what's the best practice rather than you know the first few years i was in the business i just threw mud on the wall as fast as i could spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on all kinds of different things to see what would work and um you know why not just follow somebody else's systems that that's already working like you right yeah yeah i mean you can shortcut the process right you know that's kind of yeah. was the eye opener for us and just sharing what what took us six years to do that we could get people to do it in in two and a half to three we we're exactly. like okay exactly. there's there's definitely something something here that we need to pay attention to yeah. and then i think too you know be also it's just all it's just always be learning always plugging in always trying to you know finding solutions to to the riddles that you know we're all trying to solve and um you know in constant pursuit of that freedom and yeah. whatever freedom is is for you yeah. The other neat thing I like too is that I get to bounce things off of. I mean, you know, Andre. Andre has been uh, it's been amazing. He's like, you know, he, he's he's incredible source of knowledge and everything else. And and uh, we, we talk at least you know once or twice a week on on different things. But like Al Stasek as well. I mean, I, I've connected with him. We kind of had similar businesses before, and he's the one that kind of helped me come over. And uh, and with Jay, I mean, it's just been amazing, right? But I've, I've connected with a few guys that I'm able to bounce ideas off of. And I think that that's a big part of coaching is just to be able to have somebody that has done more than you. And, you know, like I, I, I remember one time I had a coach and, and the most he had ever sold in a year was 50 homes. Well, we were doing 250 to 300. And I was like, okay, what's he going to teach me <laughs> about how yeah. to get 500 when he's never done it, right? Um, but now I'm around people like you guys that have done so much more and it's, it's so exciting. Yeah, it is. And, and, um, you know, I definitely aligning and working with people that, you know, it's the whole plus minus and equal, you know, um, concept, you know, having somebody that's a plus that's mentor, that's out, that's out ahead of you that have done things that, that you want to do, you know, the, the minus is, somebody below you, right. That you're pouring in, you're their mentor, you're their leader. And then the equal is, is somebody that's right there, you know, running side by side with you, holding you accountable, that accountability, um, mm -hmm. partner and to be able to have, you know, and two, and, and also, um, you know, even, even from a coaching, coaching dynamic, you know, I think it's good to find models, but, but also, you know, a coach that, um, that you can also connect with that can help you, navigate life right through all the equities and, and really you know the head the head games that you know we all we all play and um, i'll never forget you know so we we mentored and, and coached with clay mask who's ceo at infusionsoft and his coach um i mean his coach one hundred fifty thousand a year that you you wrote a check on january 1st for 150k that was your coaching for the year and yep. you had to fly in to him 
and you know, for Clay, I mean, it was a drive, but you had to go see him once a week. And, you know, he has people all over the world that would fly in to, for their coaching sessions. But he said he moved away from them because he was like, you know, I needed it where our business is going. I need somebody there. And he said, you know, I found those people that helped us. He said, but they couldn't help me deal with what I was dealing with. So he ended up going back, back to him. And so yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's okay to have different coaches and, you know, I mean, I've got a, you know, coach for the business, you know, I got a coach, you know, for the endurance, you know, stuff that I do. Yeah. And so, you know, you just find those equities where do you want to improve and align with the coaching dynamic to help you get there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. So what's next, um, you know, for you guys, um, you know, continuing to grow, what, uh, what, what, what's the future? You know, I think, and, and this is something you and I talked about, we're going to probably have a conversation later about it as well is, is now how do we build a revenue share side of the team? Right. So, I mean, the goal this year is to hit 40 agents on our, you know, our local team and uh, help those people grow. Obviously, um, you know, we want to, I, I mean, I've got, I've I, you know what? I've got. To, we have a great life. We're so blessed, right? We, you know, I, I now get to golf three times a week, um, which is a big passion of mine, right? That I could never do before. Um, you know, my wife and I last night booked some trips. You know, we're going to St. Thomas. Uh, we booked that. We, you know, we're going to Vegas. We're going to Arizona for for a few weeks before Vegas. Well, you're finally getting to travel, so that's good. Getting to travel, so we're excited, <laughs> right? And then and then you know what? We're we're taking the winter and we're going down to our house in Arizona, which we didn't get to do last year. So. Um, the, the whole idea is to now start working from, you know, remotely uh, from wherever and to build the kind of the EXP side and overlook the team and, and manage the team and make sure that everybody's happy within the team. And uh, I want to keep that going because I enjoy that side of it still. I know I know there's some guys that have decided to get away from doing the whole team thing, but I just think it's um, it's just way too good of a thing. And I just love to see people succeed and do well. So I, I think we just continue to grow that and um, have some fun. Like, you know, some people say, hey, when are you going to retire? I just turned 51, so I'm not ready to retire. But I kind of feel like I'm retired, right? Like I'm kind of feeling semi-retired because I'm doing what I like now. Rather than when I had my brokerage, it was like there's a lot of crap that I didn't like doing. Uh, now the stuff that I'm doing is all the stuff that I I have fun doing. So yeah. it doesn't feel like work, you know? Like it's not it's not the same stresses. And um, I, I still have that competitive side of me, though, that wants to grow. So, um, so I think that that's kind of like the next thing in line for us. I love that. How, so – you know, a lot of people get to get to that freedom, right? And freedom, that's the ultimate goal for any of our business. Just you guys, you know, I, I used to think, you know, the only goal in business was, was, was a profit, but the profit is just an outcome, but the goal is freedom. And everybody has a different definition of freedom that we're working towards. And so what do you say, you know, for, for you, how do you not become complacent? How do you not just become, okay, hey, we're good. I'm going to play golf five days a week. <laughs> and you guys have fun. I'll check in. You know, if you need me, call me. Yeah. How do, how do you stay um, for you? How do you not get complacent? You know what? That, that's a good question. I wish I, I wish I knew the answer. I mean, I, I, I'm so competitive, right? I'm so – I'm always looking. Well, I'll tell you what. Listening to you guys keeps me going. <laughs> because if I don't listen to you, I do get complacent. If I do not do the coaching and listen to the videos and, and get on Honey Badger, like I, I'm scrolling through Honey Badger, that page all the time. When there's a video, boom, I watch it, right? Or I listen to it while I'm driving or whatever. And if I didn't do that, John, I think I think I would start to go down. Mm. I really do, right? Because now you're like, okay, we're comfortable. Like, like last month, June, um, we closed over 70 transactions on our team, and I was part of two of them. Right. So I get excited about that. But now I'm like, OK, and I don't know. It's, I, and I don't want to seem greedy, but it's more of like, OK, how do we help these guys get to 100? How do we get them? You know, how do I? And, and I literally I got my wealth chart. I've got pages and pages of notes on on everybody within the team. And I'm constantly looking at, OK, where are they at? How do I get them to the next level? Where do I? That's that's my motivation now is how can I help them? Uh, you know, because you know what, when they come over, I promise them a lot of stuff. So I want to, I want to deliver, right. Deliver on the promise. And I want to make sure that they're doing well. 
So I think that that's, um, but seriously, I, I got to stay plugged in. And if every, mm -hmm. everybody, you know, and, and even when I go down to Arizona, I'm plugged in nonstop, right? I'm, I'm like, and this is what I want to do. I just want to do calls. I want to help everybody grow their business. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's finding that motivation. One of, one of my favorites is uh, Mary Murphy. And so Mary was a school teacher before getting into real estate. And so we, 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 you know, always push her, right. You know, Hey, she made, she made more in a, in a month than she did teaching entire year. Then she made more in a week than teaching and she made more in a day than teaching. And then she, she came into our kitchen table event last week and she sat there. She said, hold on guys, I got to share this. She goes, I just made more sitting here in this room <laughs> than I did a year of teaching. So wow. that was, that's always, that's been her, her drive, right. Is always kind of looking at that. And I was just like, man, how cool is that? You know, somebody that's, you know, struggling, not happy and then finds that fire and you know the financial reward, but you know it's also the impact that uh, that they're able to have. You know, you know it's it's rewarding hearing those stories, right? Like it's like even I was just on a call before you here and um, helping one of our agents with a, a brokerage that's that's looking at coming over, and he's went from not having a team to having fifteen agents on his team in like a period of probably less than a year. And you know, I hear that, and I go you know, he grew it because of EXP, right? And, and I don't mean the, the rev share, I mean his actual team, right? So I hear those success stories and it's like, yeah, you know what? We made the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> the There's so thing. many of those out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is so cool. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Pierre, any, anything that, um, you know, as we kind of wrap up that you want to, you know, maybe leave people with to think about, um, from a model perspective as it pertains to the model, you know, kind of for them moving forward. Cause you know, I, I mean, I have lots of conversations of, of the model and tweaking things in alignment. And one, one point you said it well ago, and I want to emphasize for everybody listening in is that we're just now really starting to focus on rev share. Whereas you stayed focused on building the team, building the business, building the company production, and yep. now it's starting to shift almost 300 in your rev share group, almost 30 agents on the team. And, and I think that's, I, I love hearing that because that's so important because there's so many people that let go of the monkey bar that's putting, you know, keeping the roof over their heads to, to focus on something that's long-term and, you know, how do you juggle, you know, the long-term vision which is the rev share opportunity, what, what EXP provides, but you also have to stay committed to what's now to keep the roof over the head that, you know, is that something you did intentionally or is that just, just how it played out? You know, what would you say to, to people listening in? Hey guys, if you're going in with this model, understand, you know, the two things, right? The long term and the short term. Yeah. I, I don't think that we could have left, right? And and my one of my biggest concerns when we moved over to EXP was I don't want to lose what's already coming in because the, what's coming in is good, right? And and I think that was my wife's concern too, is like, we don't want that to fall apart. Yeah. So, you know, we had to focus on the agents. We had to focus on making sure that they were doing well. Um, now, I mean, I still like that part and it's still very profitable. And I, I mean, I shared some numbers with you earlier and you're like, yeah, I, I get it. You don't want to leave that um, because that's another stream. Right. And, and I guess in EXP, the thing that we're trying to teach people is to have multiple streams of income. Right. Um, so that is one very good stream for me. <laughs> so I don't want to lose <laughs> that. Um, and, and that stream fuels some of the other things that we want to do. So now we're starting to invest some money back into uh, the rev share side of things. So, I would say, you know what, it's okay to build your teams, but make sure that there's value there for your people, right? Um, I make probably a little bit less than I probably should. And some people, you know, have made comments to me about all well, your splits are pretty low uh, compared to what we're doing. And I'm like, yeah, but now look what's happened. Like I, I gave up short term. Yeah. And, and that was something that was taught to me by Alan Jay, right? You know, maybe give up a little bit short term, but long term, it's going to be way better for you, right? So now when I see what we're making in rev share every month, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's start paying attention to that. 
Um, but I'm also finding that people are reaching out to me to help them more now than before. So I think I'm more comfortable having conversations with brokerages and and big teams and things like that. So I think that that's been good as well. And uh, and I'm very fortunate to have some great people in our organization. Like you know, we've we've got some amazing generals that are are doing wonderful things, and it's it just motivates you, right? Yeah. So so yeah. So I think you know what um, you know you can't. I used to always have a set vision of what the model was going to be and that's it that's all what i've learned is that's got to be constantly changing um if i keep the same model it's not going to always work right so if i could give anybody advice is is just to have a little bit of flexibility and do what works for you right yeah if if that's my model that's working for us right now i'm not saying i'm not going to change it in six months right if things change then i got to change with it right just like joining exp we didn't plan on changing but my son said to me, you know, dad, he goes, you keep doing what you're doing. You're going to keep getting what you've been getting. And, and you know what, whether you like this or not, this is happening. Right. So either we jump on board now and, you know, we, we benefit from it or we wait, you know, till we have to do it. Right. Yeah. And we've brought on some people recently that we talked to two years ago. And I had one lady say to me, she goes, I can't believe I wasted two years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know what? Timing wasn't right. Timing nope. wasn't right. So. Nope. Timing's right now. Away we go, and and uh, you know, upwards and onwards, and we're excited. That's it, man. Absolute gold. Yeah. Pierre, I appreciate you uh, taking the time, jumping in, adding a ton, ton of value, as I know you would. And um, for folks that you know maybe want to continue the conversation with you directly or get a little more insight on the model and the details, how can they connect with you best? Um, you know, my email Pierre at exprealty.com is probably you know the best um way to reach reach me or through workplace or whatever um you know i don't mind sharing with anybody i've, I've had all kinds of people reach out on on the brokerage side of things and, and switching that over in canada which has been great and i love helping people so um yeah that's probably the best way and and john i wanted to thank you for having me on here but what i really want to thank you for is doing this with all kinds of other agents because we do watch it right there's a lot of people that that watch this stuff and it's very motivational. It, it helps. It really does help. And and some of the people that you've had on here are, are really inspirational. And uh, and thank you for doing it because it really helps our entire group. So cool, man. Well, I appreciate that. And thank you guys so much. Awesome. Well, Pierre, it's been fun. Um, I know we'll uh, hopefully be able to circle back in the future to hear kind of the next phase, but uh, yeah. you guys take advantage of, of Pierre. And um, if you want to grow that, I know James, you were, you were asking, reach out, get connected and um, help, uh, help you guys accomplish what it is that you are wanting to accomplish. So awesome. Pierre, awesome. thank you again. We'll see you guys. See ya.